Hello all and welcome back to another OpenGL screencast. Today we're going to be talking about pushing and popping a matrix as well as complex complex objects. So um, nothing really new here. We are going to go down. Um, I created a few different um, taken from previous examples. We're going to draw a cube at certain locations. Translated, rotated, and scaled. You'll note here at the beginning we have a push. At the end we have a pop. And the same thing with cone here where we have a push and a pop at the end as well as the transformations. And we have a spike which is basically a cone but it's also rotated and pushed and popped previously. Finally we have a tower which consists of a push and pop translations and several cubes and several spikes. So let's get into it and just kind of see what goes on with pushing and popping and having we're build how we are going to build these complex objects here. So first we could just start off with a cube and like I said this is the translation so it, this is going to be position 1, 0, 1 so out the x and z axis and it's going to be scaled 1, 1, 1 at 0. So if we go ahead and make that you can see it is 1 forward and 1 towards the z at 0, 0, 0. So now let's go ahead and make it twice as tall. So this is a little refresher for you. And you can see it does just that. So now if I have two cubes here at the exact same spot, what the pushing and pulling does is it makes it so that we push the matrix translations and transformations such as translate, scale, and rotate. And then when we pop them, we go back to the original spot we had. So as you can see, even though we have two cubes, they're both in the exact same spot. Now suppose we go up to the cube here, and we comment out these, the push and the pop. What's going to happen? Basically, what you're going to end up doing is every time you make a transformation, they're cumulative on top of each other. So by not pushing and popping and calling back-to-back -back cubes here, um, we're going to end up drawing a cube and then doing more trans uh, another 1-1 one, one transformation, drawing a second cube. So you'll see both of them now. So we draw one cube over 1-1, one, one, and then since we're not pushing and popping, we're going to move from this point and go 1-1. One, one. So that's basically how pushing and popping works. Um, let's just open that again. If we, in the original cube, we would go 1-1, one, one, draw it, um, and then, well, we would push from here, go 1-1, one, one, and then we pop it, and so we would go back to there, and that's why we would have a second cube here. So let's go add those push pops back really fast. And then... Let's go back down to our display here, and let's just change this to be negative 1. So now, what's going to happen is we're going to have, start here, and we'll go push, we'll draw one here, pop it, go back, and then we'll push, and we'll draw one here, and pop it, and we'll go back. So you can see that these are cumulative effects. So as we draw each of these, you can see we have different pushing and popping and such. Um, one thing I want to show real quick is uh, you see this is the cone here at the top. The bottom is also a cone and I just changed the code a little bit from before where I defined the uh, number of sections here to be uh, the definition D I had said is um, 90 I believe or 40 or five, excuse me, it's the number of degrees, and that's 72 different locations around that circle, to making the cone be a little more robust. So we take the number of degrees here instead as an input. And so in this case, um, the when I say 90, we're taking 90 degrees, so we'll have four points total. So just to show you that again, we have four points on that 
cone right there. So one, two, three, four. So well, you know, doing stuff like that allows us to uh, create things that are like pyramids and such. So pretty easy. So now you can kind of see how we're going to build this, you know, advanced tower, which is basically a lot of push and pops. And so let's make this. And you can see we have a really tall cube. We got a squatty, fatter cube that's been rotated. And then we have several different uh, spikes here. Oh, I made my box too small. Let me zoom back out. So we have several different spikes here that have been rotated around. So let's take a look at that spike code just to show you that. So here's the um, tall cube. You can see that it's, uh, or excuse me, this is the fat squatty cube. This is the tall cube. And you can see this has been rotated and the original point is a little higher. Spikes basically take in the same thing as a cone. Um, three original points, the number of points around, so this should actually be uh, yeah, they're 90 because I wanted to be cones. And then I have, because of the way that the cone works, um, the rotation only is going to be, because I'm drawing it sideways, I'm only rotating it here. So the spike is actually going to be able to rotate between the X, Y, and Z based off what's been input. So, and then it has its own push. And then it calls the cone, which has its own push on top of that. So pushes and pops are cumulative. So in this case, when I'm drawing a, this tower, which we can now get rid of because I actually have the same code here. This draws a tower at 0, 0, 0, size 1, 1, 1, not rotated. So going up here, we can see that you push it, then you draw a cube, you make the transformations, you draw a cube, and then it's that's pushed and popped. This cube is pushed and popped. These spikes are pushed and popped into cones, which are pushed and popped. And so it's all cumulative. So we can have a tower here. It looks exactly the same. And when we're drawing these complex objects, we can just keep on pushing on new matrices as long as we pop them off at the end. Um, we can basically create these complex objects that are all over the place. So this is the exact same tower, and this will be too close, so let me back up my dimensions a little bit here. And so the only difference, obviously, is it's been translated and scaled um, in the x direction and then slightly rotated. So it's moved over on the x, it's been scaled on the z, excuse me, and then rotated 30 degrees. So that's basically how push and pop works, and that's how you can build complex objects easily in OpenGL. Um, I hope this has been helpful to you guys, and I'll talk to you again soon.